Yes, amen. Sister Gabby, just want to turn my microphone down a little bit. I have a feeling I'm going to uh, shout tonight. <laughs> amen. <laughs> Let's turn our Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. 1 Corinthians 13, 11. Amen. Turn it up a tiny bit, just a little bit. A little bit. One, two, check. That's good. Amen. When you're there, say amen. 1 Corinthians 13. Hallelujah. That's good. We're getting there. We're getting there. I'm feeling good about tonight's sermon, church. There's a company uh, that specialize in freezing your body. In freezing your body. You can be frozen. And the company is called Creolife. You specialize in freezing people's bodies and the temperature that they freeze you at is minus 141 degrees. Now, you know when snow comes, it's cold. Hello, it's cold, amen. Zero degrees or minus one degrees or one, de or one degree. You know, that's kind of that's kind of snow weather. Or minus 141 degrees is what they use to freeze people's bodies, amen. And, you know, they call it cryotherapy. It's, it's a, you know, it's one of those weird words, one of those weird things that happen in, in, in somewhere in Europe, you know, European countries, they do these kind of things. And then cryotherapy, it's meant to keep you looking and feeling young. That's what it does. It's meant to, it's meant to keep you looking well, keep you looking fit. Amen. And one user had said it felt so good that she's addicted. And it's this machine you go in and they use some, some gases, etc. And, it, and it's just freezing your body. And it's meant to keep you young. People that are old feel young again. Amen. The crowd looks pretty young tonight. But when you get older, you might want to try cryotherapy. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And, you know, people love to stay young. But the reality of life is that we have to grow up. Amen. Come on, let's get real. We have to grow up in life. When you enter into a relationship with God, you don't just stay as what we would call a new convert. You don't just stay as someone who is born again and that's it. You're just born again and you stay a baby in Christ. Uh, no, God wants you to grow. Can you say amen with me tonight? Amen. But some just want to stay frozen in their faith. Some just don't want to grow up. And now this sermon I'm entitled Growing Old with Jesus because God wants you to grow. God wants you to know him deeper than you know him now. God wants you to grow, amen, in your faith, in ministry, in revelation. God wants to use you. But many times, the only way that God is going to use you is if you grow. Amen. So we're going to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. Paul, the apostle, he says, When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Let's pray here tonight. Father, right now I'm praying you open up your scripture. That you, God, will touch every heart, Lord God. That we, O oh Lord, will repent, O oh God, of any sin, O oh Lord, that lies beneath the surface. Lord, we're praying, God, that you will highlight areas that we need to change. But Lord God, most importantly, help us to know that you are with us, God. That you want us to grow, Lord. And that you, Father God, are into us, O oh Lord, growing in you, Father. We thank you for your grace and mercy. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, Amen. Firstly, let's look at aging and changing. In life, as you get older, you're going to be faced with choices. You're going to be faced with circumstances, events that demand you to adapt to them. Amen. Amen. Your body ages. Let's get real. You will eventually get wrinkles. And when you get wrinkles, 
Ladies, I'm, I'm afraid to say you might not be able to wear the same makeup that you're wearing now. Amen. When, amen, men, you're going to have to start to shave, amen, at some point. Or shape up. <laughs> amen. Don't watch my shadows, church. Don't watch it. But, amen, puberty comes. Your body changes, your mind starts to change as you enter through the teenage years, amen. Your emotions go up and down, but then your emotions start to adapt to where you are. And at certain ages, amen, in the UK, um, you know, we have national ages, around 15 and 16, you start to do your GCSEs, amen. They've made ways to do that later, but uh, normally you leave school around 16, amen, 17 years old, and you're, a, you're able officially to learn to drive, amen, 18 and above, you now step into adulthood. Leaving home, marriage, kids, Parenthood, amen. Women's bodies change in parenthood. Emotions change. Men, your world shifts when you become of age to move out. Hallelujah. Age brings responsibility. Age brings dignity. Age brings a, a, a leadership over your own life, a stewardship over your own choices. Amen. And the Bible describes this as seasons. Because seasons change. How many know seasons of life change? Ecclesiastes 3, 1, for everything there is a season. And a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted and so on and so forth. Life in the physical is a constant process of change. A constant changing in the physical. You're growing, you're transforming, you get taller, amen. Men, your shoulders get broader, hallelujah. <laughs> we transform and we ought to change when our bodies start to change, amen. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember when I was younger, I was 14 years old, my stepfather taught me how to shave. Taught me how to use an electric shaver. I'm like, what on earth is this contraption? I don't want to put that on my face. Amen. But then I started to use it. And then I started to learn how to do a wet shave. And that hurt. Amen. I was shredding up my face. Amen. Like I was chopping vegetables. <laughs> Amen. But the time, and the time came as well. I was 22 years old, and I was in the park in Erdington, and amen, I covered up a bench, and, and there was four rows on there, the time came when I needed to propose, and they said, will you marry me? And then I took Natalie through the park, amen, and then I got down on one knee, I did it church, amen, because age matters, and sometimes you just go do it, amen, age is going to demand things of you. Life seasons change from a 14 year old boy shaving to 18 year old driving to 22 proposing to a woman. I had to learn to adapt, think differently, put my hand to new things and I couldn't be the same scruffy boy that I was, amen. I couldn't, hey, hey, never mind, I was going to make a joke, but probably they going to hold that one back, amen. But we change with life seasons, church. We change physically, but spiritually, we ought to change as well. But sometimes, spiritually, we don't change. We ought to grow with the flow of life, and your Christianity will be changing. You know, God demands and plans for you to be mature. As, you're, as you age... What starts to happen is that you, you are confronted with the issues of life. You're confronted with, with different stages, different seasons of life. And Jesus, amen, wants to be involved in those seasons so that you don't just change physically, but you change spiritually as well. Your relationship with God as you embark on these life changes 
Your relationship with Jesus begins to change. You start to pray for different things. Amen. You start to ask God for different things. You start to believe God for new things. Your prayers become bigger. Amen. Think of parenthood. Amen. You pray for your kids. Or wait, maybe you're leaving home or you're, or you're seeking to get a job or you're seeking to do this. You start to pray for those things. God starts to deal with you in certain ways. Amen. Your eyes begin to open as you grow in society as you grow, amen, as a human being, God starts to put things on your heart. As age goes on, as time goes by, and if you're going to make it for Jesus, you're going to have to grow in Jesus. Amen. Paul says, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood and I thought as a child. Amen. Your speech will change. You start to speak differently. You understand differently, amen. You ask God for revelation. You start to think differently, amen, of what outcomes should be like, amen, of where you want to be in Jesus, amen. God plans for your growth, hallelujah. Let me tell you, God is involved in you growing. God doesn't want you staying the same stagnant old person that you once were, amen, or young person, rather. God wants you to grow. You don't know Jesus very well. Jesus wants you to know he is open to you, amen. He wants you to know who he is, amen. Believers, Jesus' plan is that you don't stay the same spiritually, but that you grow, amen. First, 2 Corinthians 3.18, but we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord, amen, that God wants you to transform, God wants you to grow, wants you to know him, wants you to pray deeper things, amen, wants you to understand the Bible, wants you, amen, to be used in the church, but your choices determine your growth. God's intention is for you to grow, not to be stuck in the same sin. Not to, not to be stuck, amen, in the same habits, having the same hobbies, but to prosper in spiritual things, in the gifts, entering into ministry, reaching a calling in Jesus, amen. A calling. Some of you, you may stand behind this pulpit some of you, you may be overseas doing something for Jesus. It demands submission, but first it demands growth, amen. God doesn't want you to be stuck in the same place. Let me tell you, when you choose Jesus, when you make godly choices, you will grow. Though age relates to your physical, you know, you have birthdays. We have birthdays once a year, right? Unless you're born on February the 28th. Leap year, you only have birthdays like four, every four years. Well, shame on you, but amen. Your hair grows gray as well. You know, things start to change. Physical age changes, but it doesn't necessarily mean your spiritual age changes. The way you mature is different. Your spiritual maturity is not based on your job or your house or whether you're married or not. It's based on whether Jesus is in those things and whether you're seeking Jesus through it. So second, let's look at forever young. Because when we age, we naturally think things are going to get a little more serious. And they are. That's true. Things are going to get very serious, in fact. Serious things in life can scare us a little as well. Let's be honest. We as believers can have the temptation just to sit down, not grow. I don't want to face reality. Amen. I want to stay, amen, in my little bed, amen, in the corner of my room and with my pillow over my head. I don't want to hear about the seriousness of life. I want to stay with mom forever. Same. <laughs> but we end up being spirits. Uh, we end up being... Uh, those people, amen, that go to the cryotherapy, we start to spiritually freeze ourselves. Cryotherapy, amen. When you freeze your body, they want to feel young again. Spiritually, we can do the same thing. We hope to stay young. We can think, if I get older in Jesus, if I get more serious for God, then it's not going to be fun anymore. But in reality, amen, Jesus wants you to grow, and the serious things are going to have to come about in your life, amen. But we seek to freeze our involvement. 
Sometimes we can hold back our commitment to Christ. We won't step out. We won't jump into church activity. We can think, I'm not ready to grow. I'm not ready to mature. Or we can freeze our intimacy with God. Sometimes we can hold back from praying. Won't pray for a spouse yet. Won't pray for a job yet. Won't pray for dominion in a certain area yet because we're enjoying being a babe in Christ or enjoying our hobbies. We won't seek Jesus to know him deeper. And we can see spiritual maturity as being boring. Come on. When, you know, young people. We, we, look at, we look at older people. I won't say old people. We look at those that are elderly and we can, in the flesh, we can just think, man, that looks like a boring life. And so spiritually, amen, we can almost do the same thing. If I get more serious for Jesus, amen, I'm not going to be able to have the fun that I was once having. And that's a dangerous mistake to think about because there's consequences, church. Your life in Christ stops moving. If you stop growing, you don't want to grow. Your life in Christ doesn't move. You know, I've seen... So Christians, year after year, I go to conference every year, and I see the same person, and nothing has changed in their life. Jesus hasn't covered their life anymore, amen? They haven't got deeper into Jesus. It's the same. Nothing changed. Still in the same struggle, in the same place where you left them, the same habits, the same issues, amen? And it starts to look a little odd. Now there's a man in Erlington, that he rides a bike and he has these glasses, they're like normal glasses, but the lens kind of flips up. And so he has the lens flipped up. <laughs> and so he has no lens over his eye, but he has the lens flipped up. He's got a baseball cap on. He's riding a bike and attached to the handles and on his hands. There's strings attached to the handles and he's holding the strings to steer the bike. And he has trainers on, tracksuit bottoms, a shirt with a, with, which is open and chains on. And he's not in his 20s. He's not 17. He's not 50. He's in his 70s. Hey, he's in his 70s. He's over 70 years old and he's riding a bike in tracksuit bottoms and trainers. Let me tell you, that looks strange. He's saying that. Why on earth is he doing it? We laugh, church. But spiritually, when we don't grow, this is what we look like. Come on, let's get real. When we don't grow in Jesus, it's, we've been around for so long, but spiritually, it's like, what's going on? We haven't grown. Here's a man that hasn't grown up. Time goes by. He hasn't grown and spiritually, time goes by. We haven't grown. We just look a little bit out of place. God, remember, wants to take you from glory to glory. God wants to transform your life day by day. And let me tell you, God doesn't do it on his own. He uses your choices. He responds to your choices because I know it's impossible to please God without faith, amen, which means that God reacts when we have faith, and faith is when we pray, when we read the Bible, when we attend church, amen, when we act upon what God wants us to do. Then God moves in our lives, he moves upon our choices, and we begin to grow. But amen, when we don't grow, we get spiritually frustrated. I don't know when things don't grow, you get frustrated. Come on, you can plant a seed in the in in the, in the garden, it don't grow. And then I, I have a I have a I have a black sister, amen. And there was one time she had a natural hair out, and she like if you compare it to last year, she's pulling out her natural hair. She's like, why hasn't this grown yet? It hasn't grown one bit, and we get frustrated when things don't grow. Spiritually, if we don't grow in Christ, we can get frustrated. Now we know it's frustration, amen. Being stuck in the same sin. Frustration. When you're when you when you when you, you you're going around in circles. Spiritually, you feel like you're going around in circles. Let's get serious now, folks. We're going around in circles, not making a decision for Christ, not growing in faith, it can get frustrating. 
We just need to obey Christ. You know, not understanding revelation, not understanding why we can't receive from sermons, from the same child's issues, amen. We don't know why we do what the fellowship does as the potter's house. Our frustration because we're not growing. And if we're not growing in Jesus, you know, eventually we start declining. Pastor Buddy, you know, he says this, if you're not growing, you're dying, just like a plant. Now, a biker was going up a mountain somewhere, and as he's as he's riding up the mountain, he stopped pedaling and he started to roll back. Let me tell you, that can be just like the Christian life. That if we stop pedaling, if we stop growing, Amen. If we stop listening to Jesus, if we stop responding to the Word of God, Amen. We begin to roll backwards steadily. And it might get hard pedaling uphill. Amen. It might get hard when God is dealing with you about something because he wants you to grow. It might get hard. It might even get slow at times when you're growing, but you're still being taken from glory to glory. Because God wants you to transform. God wants you to change. God wants you to deal with these issues. God wants you to change your life. Amen. And to, to, to not stop growing, God has called you to grow. Let's look sort at of flowing with growth. Amen. Because children of God must mature. You know, there's a part in, in, in where Paul is talking to the Corinthian church. And he says, I can't talk to you the way I want to talk to you. I can't tell you about the deeper things of Jesus because you're still on milk and not solid food. It means, you know, when a baby is, is, is nursing, amen, you can't give them solid food because it's going to mess up their stomach, amen, they're not ready for it. And let me tell you, spiritually, we can be the same. And Paul is describing it here as you're not meant to be there. Amen. So of us, we're meant to be elsewhere in faith. We're meant to be on solid foods. And then God gives us a way forward. You know, God doesn't give up. And so he tells us to read, to receive, and respond. That's important, church. When you read and when you hear the word of God preached to you, you know, every time you hear it preached, every time you read, every verse, every page of your word you read, amen, it is so that you can spiritually grow. You might get rebuked. You might feel the Spirit of the Lord challenge you. You might get a word from heaven during, amen, a sermon or church service. You might get a revelation and the light bulbs come on, amen. But it's all to empower you so that you can grow and mature in Christ. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. All scripture, amen, speaking of the word of God, is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Amen. Read your Bible. Make a commitment to Jesus. Study about the Savior. Ask questions, amen. Soak up every sermon and respond to it, amen. You know, every altar call that we have, we pray, amen. We, we, uh, we, we give an altar call for those that aren't saved to get right. For those that are backslidden to get right with Jesus, amen. And for the Christians at the end to come and pray about what they've heard. Let me tell you that last point, amen. For Christians to pray about what they've heard, it's so that you can grow. It's so that you can be transformed from glory to glory, amen. Because God wants you to grow. Mm -hmm. Amen. And also we need to renovate. Has anyone ever moved house before? Mm -hmm. Amen. We moved house. Mm -hmm. We moved house. We moved out. Mm -hmm. And what happens is we start to look through things that we just don't need anymore. We kind of have these things and we're like, why, did, why do I still have this? Why is it still in the way? Let me get rid of it, amen. I don't need it because I am moving on. Spiritually speaking, God tells us some things we need to throw away before we move forward. We need to throw them away before we can grow. Main, uh, main text says, but when I became a man, I put away childish things, amen. 
That is some, amen. Some of you, you're, you're growing in age, amen. There's going to be a time when God, amen, stirs you. Ah, you know what? Maybe it's, may, you know, maybe I will get married one day. Or, amen, it's time, amen. Ah, you know what? Maybe I will go out to preach the gospel one day. Maybe I will want to have kids one day. Maybe I will, amen, do these things, this and that in the will of God one day. Amen. Paul says, you need to put away childish things or put away things from the past. Put away the things that are hindering you. Sometimes God wants us to just throw things away, old habits, distractions, and other, other things, amen, to enable us to grow. And then we need to react. If you're going to grow in Jesus, you need to do something. You need to get involved. You need to react, amen, to the word of God. React to what the Holy Ghost is talking to you about tonight, amen. God throws you into new stages of life to enable you to grow. Glory to glory because he's making something out of your life. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Think about it, church. Before you came to Jesus, you were trying to make something out of your own life. And what happened? Nothing. Amen. But then God picked you up. Jesus picked you up out of the miry clay and said, I'm going to put you on the wheel and make something out of your life. Amen. And when he's taking things apart, amen, some things have got to go. Some things are going to be added on. Amen. Some things must be repented of. Some things must change. But all in the truth that you are going to grow and transform. And what God does is he makes you stable. Ephesians 4, 14 to 15 so that, that, so that we may no longer be children, tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning and by craftiness in deceitful schemes. Rather speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ. Now this speaks of many different things. But what this, what this scripture is speaking about is being stable in what you believe, amen. Mm -hmm. That sometimes, amen, there's, there's these things that come, these thoughts that come, amen. There's people trying to speak different different religions to you. people trying to speak different things. People say, ah, oh, you can serve Jesus, amen, and, and not go to church. You can make it in faith and not go to church, amen. There's these, all these different doctrines. Of, you know, Jesus was saying, his brother, all of these weird and wonderful thoughts, but God says, as you grow, he's going to make you stable in what you believe. Stable, amen, in your Christ, in knowing Jesus, in believing, amen, what the church preaches. And when you mature, there's an understanding, amen. There is a wisdom. You won't be thrown around by what people say, by offenses, by all this and that that's going on out in the world, amen. God makes you stable as you grow. Causes you. Like your feet on a rock, amen. Every obstacle that comes your way as well, you can grow from it. The pressures, the pulls of life, the, the, the stresses, the strains of growing up in, in age, amen. Of growing up in status, in society, amen. There's stumbling blocks that the devil wants to throw at you. But amen, God says that block that the devil's throwing at you, you can step on it, amen, and grow. You can step on it and get higher. Amen. amen. That every obstacle, everything, you know, the Bible says all things, amen, work together for good. Hallelujah. Amen. The things that get thrown at us, amen. God wants you to step on those things and just say, I'm going to grow from it. God wants to prepare you for the next stage. When you're growing in Jesus, amen, you don't go from a new convert straight to an evangelist. Or a missionary, amen. <laughs> or a pastor, amen. You don't get saved for one month and then you're standing at the pulpit, amen. It's a process. Some of you are men here, amen. God's going to call you to it. But he wants you to grow first. Some women, God is preparing you for things. You've got to grow first. And then let me tell you, submission, as I close, submission is a major part of your growing. Your submission to God is going to dictate how quickly or how much you grow. Now, God, sometimes he has to teach us many things. He has to teach us things depending on what we've been getting involved in our past life, depending on what's been happening. God wants to teach you many, many different things, amen. 
Some will take longer than others, but the most important thing is that you submit to God, is that you submit to Jesus, amen, every struggle, every sin, amen, you've got to repent, amen, seek Jesus Christ, amen, say, Lord, help me, I submit my life to you. My wife was saved in November 2014. She was married to me in September 2015. Some wondered, how did that happen so fast? And my response was because she submitted to God. Because God, amen, had a plan. And God worked with the choices that she made. God wants to work with the choices that you make, amen. And let me tell you, they have to be choices for righteousness, of purity, of holiness. They have to be choices that you're going to serve Jesus, amen. You're not going to allow sin to distract you, temptation comes your way, but you resist it, and amen. You say, I'm going to flee, amen, I'm sorry, amen, I'm going to resist it, and the devil will flee. Amen, there was another man. His name was Luke Sanders, he's a pastor. He was sent out as a pastor at 19 years old. 19 years old. And he's out there running a church with his wife, amen. How? How, we might ask. Because like I said in the beginning, your spiritual age is not, a, not, not, a, not in line, amen, with your physical age. Many times you can age spiritually much quicker, amen. You can seem older than you are because you're spiritually mature. 19 years old and he's pastoring, amen. God is using him powerfully in a place called Crawley. Because he submitted. We have got to be a people of submission if we're going to grow in Jesus. Amen. And let me tell you, there are things around the corner. There are things that God is waiting. Just, just submit to me. Amen. And I'm going to show you these things. Just submit to me and I'm going to move you on. Just submit to me. Amen. Give your life to me. And these things are going to take place. He's going to open doors for you. Amen. So church, with that, can I bring it down and every eye close in this place, amen. We need to grow older in Jesus. Hallelujah.